Welcome to ABC 24 This Week, the only show in Memphis that gives you the real story behind the big stories and the only show that gives you not one, not two, but three opportunities to get the context you want behind the week's headlines. Those three broadcasts are Sundays at 9 a.m., 10.35 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. on CW30. So, without further delay, our top topics for tonight. In the Memphis mayor's race, early voting begins next week, and that brought out some key endorsements. And there was a brutal reminder at FedEx Forum this week about why crime is the number one issue facing whoever is elected mayor. We'll also talk about the race for U.S. Senate in Tennessee. Yes, Senator Marsha Blackburn's seat isn't up for more than another year, but this week it just became a key race to watch for the entire country. And another race the nation is watching is the Mississippi Governor's Contest. Voters there will decide whether to keep a troubled incumbent over a Democratic challenger as both sides are slinging mud with bigger and bigger shovels as the days progress. Before I get to any of that, I'll introduce my esteemed panel today. Otis Sanford is ABC 24 political analyst. Mark Billingsley is a former Shelby County Commissioner. And Reverend Kenneth Whalem is pastor of the New Olivet Worship Center in Cordova. Uh, gentlemen, as we do every week, we've been featuring a different candidate, so let's get right to that. Zari Oates has been doing the profiles for us. And this week, it's candidate J.W. Gibson. Let's watch. <coughs> I started my first business. A businessman through and through. It truly is that business aspect that I bring to the table. Pivoting his interest in owning multiple companies. The printing of the lottery tickets for the state of Tennessee is being done right here in Memphis. And my company does that printing. To running the 901. J.W. Gibson, a Memphis native, labeled the top three things he would want to tackle in his first 30 days as crime, bringing to the table some of the brightest minds nationally and locally to come together with strategy to really address our crime issue. Workforce. Revamp a workforce development office so that we can start training our unemployed throughout the community. And revamping the music industry. One of my platform positions is to promote the music industry as well as the entertainment industry as a whole. So those would be the three things. Some of his big three relates right back to the issue Memphians have been upset about for a while now, juvenile crime. As we talk about dealing with those youth, that's an opportunity for us to get into the high schools and collaborate with the school system to provide training through CCTE. Then there's an opportunity for us to have outside program through the community centers, after school programming, weekend programming, all around the notion of giving our high school students something to do besides cry. A lack of jobs and affordable housing opens the door to things Gibson says he can address. Go into the communities, create jobs through renovating some of these plighted communities. We can also increase the low income housing population. There's a tremendous need for low and affordable housing property. All right, that's J.W. Gibson, and all of our candidate profiles, by the way, are on abc24.com slash politics. If you want to see any of them, they're there for you. Uh, so, Otis, I think that um, the, first of all, I think J.W. Gibson has really come into his own in these final weeks of the campaign. I don't know if you agree with that, but I also seem, a lot of people seem to be responding well to his notion that, uh, like Haslam, like Corker, like Bredesen, uh, which all were cities in Tennessee that had mayors by those names that actually did quite well in those cities, that he can be that for the, for the city of Memphis. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think you're right, Richard. I mean, I, early on, I thought that uh, J.W. Gibson was going to get lost in this campaign with so many other more higher profile people running. Uh, I just didn't know where and how he would find his lane. But I think you are absolutely spot on when you say as the campaign has evolved, he has sort of found a way to get his message out there. Um, and he is not lost anymore. I'm still not totally sure where he's going to get enough votes to win. But he is holding his own. I, I did a, a, a forum uh, just Thursday night. Uh, with seven of the candidates and you know he was no shrinking violet there and he's I think the workforce development piece that he's talking about works well plays well um, so yes he's he's one of the top candidates in in this race in my view. All right Mark your thoughts. I think uh, J.W. Gibson really highlights great a uh, great success story he grew up in Dixie Homes went to Memphis City Schools he's been a very successful and powerful 
a business leader. I do like some of the messaging that JW has shared, especially around collaboration. And again, he's sort of hitting on those points that a typical race would talk about from education to crime, economic development, early childhood. But as the story started with, I think the issue is public safety. Mm -hmm. All right. But I, but I think he's a very credible uh, candidate. And like, like Otis said, I think has really shined uh, throughout this process. Mm -hmm. We know you endorse uh, Paul Young, that yes. is your guy, but uh, if you can be objective as you can, and how do you assess uh, Gibson's campaign? Well, first of all, ABC 24 does a great job with those profiles. I think Ms. Oates does a great job. They're, they're very informative. Uh, JW is an impressive uh, candidate. Um, I wish that he, among others, would not run this time, do something else this time. Just because a person has good ideas does not mean this is your time to be mayor, but it is what it is. And, and that commercial, I mean, that the commercial that he runs, they're very effective as far as I'm concerned. So this is a crucial week. I think we'd all agree. We've got three televised debates. Uh, might as well promote ours while I'm here. Uh, ABC 24's uh, mayoral debate, 90 minutes long, is Monday night, uh, September 11th, starts at 5.30, leading right up to kickoff of the Monday night football game uh, on Monday night. So uh, we're hoping for a, a good turnout for that, and I think that will be the first of uh, three that are scheduled, as I recollect. And so uh, this is really going to be, we know what the undecided numbers are, even though the polls are kind of all over the place. They're all consistent, and then there's a lot of people that are undecided, and I think a lot of minds are going to get made up this week. Otis? Oh, I agree. I mean, I, this, is, this is crunch time, as they say, um, and early voting uh, it starts on the 15th. Uh, so um, this is time for the candidates to really make their play. Uh, and being on television this much right now is key. That's why uh, Mark and I were talking off camera, and I've said this before on the show, I think Dr. Harrington is missing a golden opportunity here to participate in these debates to show that he still has what it takes to win it. He's still in the running here, but his absence is noticeable, and I just don't think he can win without it. So that's my position on that. Well, Van Turner had a good week. Uh, he picked up the endorsement of Justin Pearson and I will say just kind of the more of the activist crowd, but uh, you know, that is his lane for sure when you talk about lanes. And uh, it doesn't hurt that he was the former uh, uh, head of the Memphis NAACP either. And I wonder, uh, Mark, how much of an impact you think endorsements like that can make, especially as far as galvanizing that youth vote that normally doesn't really turn out? Uh, well, again, when I go to the polls, I feel like a young man when I go to the polls because <laughs> literally the people of Shelby County really turn out in wheelchairs, walkers, senior citizens understand the power of voting. They, they will get up and go vote. It's very rare that I see 18 to 30 year olds voting. Mm -hmm. So um, I think endorsements are as, as good as the the as you think of that endorser, but for the most part, I've never really voted for anybody based on an endorsement. Mm -hmm. But I, do, I agree with everyone. I think this is a week to shine. I ran into Van Turner the other day at lunch. He was surrounded by a group of pastors. Um, everybody is out there. They're working. If you look at most of the candidates, they're wearing tennis shoes because they are out working this campaign. And I think that's that's really good. Like you, I think uh, D Dr. Harrington is, is missing an opportunity to debate, especially when he is such a great orator. And he's a, a boxer by trade. But what an interesting debate it would be if he chose to participate. Uh, and your guy picked up an endorsement this week, uh, rapper NLE Choppa. NLE Choppa. And he put and it on. Let's listen to the endorsement okay, first. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. Uh, we'll get your reaction. Nelly Chopper, and I am proud to endorse someone that represents true leadership. I need everybody to know that I'm behind Paul Young and I'm voting Paul Young as the new Memphis mayor. And I pray that everyone else is behind him. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so I'm a. I'm a and Lily Choppa fan, I have to say. I'm, I'm a hip hop fan. And uh, so I was like, oh, wow, okay, it caught my attention. Uh, but on the other side, and this has been the controversy, Emily Chapa has some of the most profane graphics you're ever going to hear, or lyrics that you're ever going to hear. And videos. And videos. And, you know, does that really help a candidate who's trying to be a mayor and kind yeah. of elevate, elevate the conversation? Yeah, it depends on who's voting. It depends on um, who's voting. It depends on if the people who are motivated by those videos and lyrics uh, are motivated enough to go and vote. I think, uh, as Otis has referred to, this is a very, very 
um, excellent opportunity for younger voters to turn out in ways that they have not in the past. So I just look forward, I look forward to you guys' debate because I have a feeling your questions and the, just the, the atmosphere is going to produce some convincing performances from those who are there. And I happen to believe that one of the reasons Mayor Harrington, former Mayor Harrington, is not participating is because they would attack him in ways that he could not defend because his record has not been 100% great. Mm -hmm. I think that he knows that there are at least two or three people there who are not afraid to come at him and they have receipts for what they'd be attacking him with. Mm -hmm. Well, we have given this debate a lot of thought and I do think people will glean something for it, from it for sure. 